Hi friends, in this short session we will look at what we call sequences. Sequences means a set of numbers that follow a certain pattern. A sequence is a set of numbers that follow a certain pattern. For example, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Infinitely is a pattern. Now you see 1, 3, 5, 7, etc. is a pattern. Now 1, 3, 9, 27, 81, etc. is a pattern. In this case, these are all natural numbers. These are all numbers with a common difference of 2. In this case, you see 1 multiplied by 3 is 9, 3 multiplied by 9 is uh, 3 is 9, 9 multiplied by 3 is 27 and so on and so forth. Now it can be the reverse order also. It can be like 3 for, uh, sorry, 512, 512, 64, 8, 1, 1 by 8, etc. In this case, it is a division, which is 512 divided by 8 is 64, 64 divided by 8 is 8, 1 and then 1 by 8 etc. Any set of numbers that follow a certain pattern is called a sequence. Now most common sequences are arithmetic progression and geometric progression. Arithmetic progression and geometric progression. Now. Uh, an arithmetic progression is a sequence in which a particular number is always added to the previous number to get the next number. For example, an AP will be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, etc. Now if you see, the difference between any two numbers is the same. And that is what is called the common difference. That is what is called the common difference. Now there are two things in any sequence that we are excited about. It is about the nth term. So what will be the fifth term of the sequence? What will be the tenth term of the sequence etc. It will be the nth term. And in case of an AP or arithmetic progression, the nth term a n is equal to a plus n minus 1 into d okay a plus n minus 1 multiplied by d will be what will be the nth number so what is a a is the first number and n is the nth number that you have to find out n minus 1 multiplied by d so in this particular sequence if you see if you find out the fifth number 1 2 3 4 5 fifth number will be first number plus 5 minus 1 4 multiplied by 2 that is 1 plus 8 equal to 9 see this is the fifth number 1 2 3 4 5 fifth number will be 9 so here you have the nth number is a plus n minus 1 into d where a is the first number n is the nth number that you are trying to find out and d is the common difference now the second term that we are very interested in is sum to n terms, sum to n terms, okay, sum to n terms of an AP, okay, SN, sum to n terms of an AP is n by 2 multiplied by 2A plus n minus 1 into D, 2A plus n minus 1 into D or it is n by 2 into if you put this as a plus a plus n minus 1 into d that becomes a plus a n a plus a n okay n by 2 into a plus a n now let us look at this particular series and try and validate these two okay now uh, what is the sum to 5 terms 1 2 3 4 5 5 terms you will know that the sum to 5 terms is 1 plus 3, 4, 4 plus 5, 9, 9 plus 9, 18, plus 7, 25. We know it is 25. Let's see and substitute this. If it is the fifth term, it will be 5 by 2 divided, uh, multiplied by a is 1 plus a n. Fifth term is 9. So you have 5 by 2 into 10. That will be 
5 into 5, that is 25. And that is the sum we got when we add up the value. There is no need to uh, find out whether this will stay true because this is a plus a n represented in detail. 2a plus n minus 1 multiplied by d. So, what are uh, the characteristics of an AP? AP uh, means arithmetic progression. It will have a common difference. Common difference means the difference between any two successive numbers will be the same. Now, sum to n terms is n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d and nth term will be a plus n minus 1 into d. This is what uh, we are interested in arithmetic progression as of now. Okay. Now let us look at the geometric progression. Okay, geometric progression. Now uh, let's take an example. We'll take the same example: 1, 3, 9, 27, 81, uh, 243, etc. Okay, this is uh, a geometric progression. Geometric progression essentially means that the difference between any two numbers this is not the uh, subtraction the, the the quotient of any two successive numbers will be the same so 3 divided by 1 is 3 9 divided by 1 is uh, 9 divided by 3 is 3 27 divided by 9 is 3 81 divided by 27 is 3 243 divided by 81 is 3 so everywhere the common ratio remains the same. The ratio of any two successive numbers will be the same and that is the common ratio. Here again we are interested in two terms. The nth term a n will be a r to the power n minus 1. a r to the power n minus 1. Now let us see if it is validated in this case. See we want to find out the fifth term 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Fifth term is 81. What is A? A is the first term again. That is 1. R, the common ratio here is 3. 3 raised to 5 minus 1 or 3 to the power 4. So this becomes 1 into 3 to the power 4. And what is 3 to the power 4? 81. So you get the value as 81. So remember, the nth term of any A L geometric progression or GP is A R raised to N minus 1. Now, as in the previous case, we are interested in the sum to n terms. Okay? Now, sum to n terms of a geometric progression. Sum to n terms of a geometric progression is a multiplied by r raised to n minus 1 divided by r minus 1. r raised to n minus 1 divided by r minus 1 when r is greater than 1. In the case of r being less than 1, it will be a into 1 minus r raised to n divided by 1 minus r. 1 minus r raised to n divided by 1 minus r. In the case of r less than 1. Here, obviously r is greater than 1. We are finding out the sum of the first 5 terms. So, what will be the sum of first, first 5 terms? Obviously, a is 1, r is 3, 3 raised to 5 minus 1 divided by 3 minus 1. Okay. What is 3 raised to 5? 3 raised to 5 is 243. 243 minus 1 is 242. That is 242 by 2 which is equal to 121. 121. Let us validate that here. Uh, this is sum to 5 terms. So, it is 81 plus 27 that is um, 108 for you, 108 plus 9, 117 plus 4, 121. So, remember, sum to n terms of a GP or geometric progression is A multiplied by R raised to n minus 1 divided by R minus 1 for R greater than 1 and A multiplied by 1 minus R to the power n divided by 1 minus R when R is less than 1. Now, uh, when R is less than 1, actually this can go on and on and on and on to the lower side such that it becomes sum to infinity of n terms and in the case of the geometric progression with r less than 1 it is a by 1 minus r this is the special thing that you need to note sum to infinity of a geometric progression with r less than 1 is a by 1 minus r a by 1 minus r 
Okay, now we've exhausted what we are interested in the basics uh, as far as A, P, and G, P is concerned. Now we will look at um, you know multiple functionalities. Let me take an example here. Let's look at this carefully. If f of zero is one, f of one is two, f of x except for 0 and 1 is x plus x minus 1 ok x plus x minus 1 now and g of x is x plus 4 find out g of f of 4 g of f of 4 this is what is called a combination function. Okay, here we have two functions. One is one is f of x. f of x is defined as x plus x minus one in general, with two exceptions. f of zero is one and f of one is two. And what is g of x? g of x is a function which says x plus four. Okay, the value of g of x is x plus four. What is to be found out? What we need to find out is g of f of 4. g of f of 4. Okay. Uh, now, uh, let us see what will be g of f of 4. Now, what is f of 4? f of 4 is x plus x minus 1. So, that is 4 plus 4 minus 1. That is 3. That is equal to 7. And what is g of f of 4? g of f of 4 is g of 7. g of 7 and that will be 7 plus 4 that is equal to 11. 7 plus 4 that is equal to 11. Okay. Now, this is called a combination function which has an addition parameter here. An additional uh, addition as the parameter here. I look at one more example and wind up this discussion. Instead of uh, x plus 1, if it was f of x, instead of x minus 1, if it was f of x minus 1, how does this change? Now let us see here. What we need to find out is g of f of 4. It's a little bit of a recursive function as uh, if you know because uh, f, f of x is a recursive function because it takes on the value of f of x minus 1 and you have to know the value of f of x minus 1 to get back to f of x. Now let's see if we need to find out f of 4 that will be 4 plus f of 3 and what is f of 3 will be equal to 3 plus f of 2. And what is f of 2? That will be equal to 2 plus f of 1. Now there is no need to go to f of 1 because we already know the value of f of 1. Just substitute the value of f of 1. So f of 2 becomes 4. 2 plus 2 is 4. Now we go to f of 3. It becomes 3 plus f of 2 which is 4 and the value is 7. And you substitute the value f of 3, 7 here. So f of 4 becomes 11. f of 4 becomes 11. 7 plus 4, that is 11. Okay. Now, uh, here, if we know that f of 4 is 11, now we need to find out what is g of 11. And g of 11 will be 11 plus 4, 15. So what is f g of f of 4? That is equal to 15. Now this is a combination function wherein one of the functions is a recursive function which takes on the value of the previous function to get to the new value or which takes the value of the previous number to get to the new value. This is called a recursive function and this also forms under sequences because f of 0, f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, f of 4, etc. will follow the same pattern. But instead of writing down as a series, we basically writing down as a function. Now let us recap what we have learned in this uh, short session. Okay, uh, What did we learn? We learned what exactly a sequence means and we learned two standard types of sequences. One is the arithmetic progression or the AP and 
the ge geometric progression or the GP. And we look at nth term and sum to n terms. Sum to n terms, which is represented as Sn, nth term and sum to n terms for both the series. Then we look at combination series, which will be represented in functions rather than in series. Okay, so we looked at combination series and uh, we looked at how to get to the combination value from the given two component series. Now, uh, as far as series is concerned, it's never ending. The most common series that we would have learned uh, when we would have come to a, 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 a high school or a higher secondary or a degree level is that of a binomial series. Okay, that is the very beginning of all series questions and it's a fascinating world out there as far as series and sequences are concerned. If you are uh, interested in pursuing them, please make sure that you go through and explore the wonderful world of sequences and series. At this time, if you're looking at com competitive exam scenarios, you should be at least thorough with what we learned in this particular discussion. This will ensure that you would attempt most of the questions that, that would come in a competitive exam scenario from sequences and series. All the best.